Hi, and welcome to another edition of mastervisualstudio.net. My name is Jeff Daniels, and today we're going to take a look at building Angular apps within Visual Studio. So I'm sure a bunch of us are now working in Visual Studio code and really love that environment, but I've found on some projects that we're really integrating with DevOps and some of the support isn't quite there in code. So I've moved over some of these apps over to Visual Studio and I wanted to show you how I did that. There's only a few short steps we need to take to get your Angular app building and properly working within Visual Studio and have all the robust support that you'd get uh, within that environment. So without any further ado, let's take a look at how to build Angular apps in Visual Studio. So the first thing we want to do is to have a couple projects to work with. We're going to need an ASP.NET Core web application and an empty Angular, or basically a starting Angular application that we're going to want to pull into it. So I'm going to fast forward through the process of creating those now. You're welcome to watch along, and let's get started. Great, now that we've got the application, I'm just going to come over here and right click and rebuild it. That succeeded. And now I'm going to go ahead and run the application just to give us an idea of what the site starts off as. So there we go. There's our initial page. And now that we've got that, let's jump over and create a quick Angular application. So all we want to do here is give ourselves a Angular application that has a few basic features so we can bring that into our Visual Studio uh, project. So let's go ahead and create an ng new my app. And I'm using Angular 8 here just for reference. So we will include routing because that will be important to just show how that works. We'll let this build out and I'm going to fast forward through this part. All right, well, thank God for the magic of fast forward. So now we've got our Angular app. Let's go ahead and just do an uh, ng build. Okay, so now we can see we've got our MVC app all set with .NET Core, and we've got our Angular app. So now we get to the fun part of actually putting these two pieces together. So let's get to that now. Okay, so what I have here is on the left-hand side, this is the Visual Studio Solution project folders, and this is the Angular application uh, project folders. And we're going to pull some files from over here and just move them over here for starters. And then we're going to go in and start editing those files. So for this first selection, we're going to go in and take the lint, the J, the TS config files, the package lock, karma, all of these, everything except essentially your git ignore, your editor.config, and your readme. We'll also take, I'm not going to take the source folder just yet. I'm going to just take these and move these to the root of the Visual Studio solution. Okay, so those are going in the, I'm sorry, not the solution, into the project file. So those are going at the root of the ASP.NET Core web application project file. Okay, so now what we want to do is take this source folder and we're going to move that over there also. So let's take source. We'll drag that whole folder right over here. So now that we've got those files where we want them, let's go into Visual Studio and start making some edits. All right, so now we're back over here in Visual Studio inside of our project, uh, project folder where we just dropped those Angular files into. And the first thing we want to do is go over and take a look at this tsconfig. So let's open that up, double click on that. And you can see here we've got an output directory that says dist out.tsc. And let's just change that to www root. So that that's where ASP.NET Core is going to, by default, put your web application. So let's put those TSC files over there. Now, the other piece we want is to let Visual Studio and 
TypeScript know that we want to exclude some things here. So let's exclude, and this is going to be node modules. And the reason I do this is because I've seen where I didn't, the solution could get painfully slow to open or work in. Uh, it goes out and tries to navigate those files for some reason. And if I include this, it seems to be a lot faster. So just a little tip there to hopefully make your life a little less painful, include that in that file. The next file we want to take is angular.json. So we go over here and we want to go in and set a couple things. We want the root now is now going to be SRC. We've got the root source is also going to be SRC, but we've got an output path down here. So we want to change that output path to match what we had in the tsconfig file. So we want to make that www root slash actually we want this to be dist instead of my app. And then we've got those changes. And now we're going to go ahead and see if we can do a build on this. So what I use is a little hotkey. Uh, it's shift alt comma. Just to show you where I get that from, if you go to tools, uh, let's see, extensions and updates, this is a pretty little handy update, open command line. So props to this guy, appreciate that. This is a great free edition for Visual Studio. And what you do is whatever directory you wanna open a command prompt to, you just do a shift, alt, comma, and there you go, opens up a command line for you. So now that we've got that open, let's go ahead and the first thing we need to do here is do an npm install, right? Because we've got to get node modules set back up because we didn't copy those over. So I'm going to run this and then fast forward through it. So we'll be right back. Okay, so it looks like we've got an error here. So let's take a look at what that can be. My guess is that we just need to update one of these directory files. So if we go over to package.json. So I'm hoping someone out there caught that before I did. And I think it's just we needed to make sure these guys were saved. Did I not have those saved? Let's go ahead and run that. I think that was able to get that resolved. There we go. All right. So now the next thing we want to do is let's just go ahead now and make sure we can do an ng build. Great, we've got a clean build here now on the Angular side within our MV, within our ASP.NET Core MVC app. And now we're just going to go through and clean out some MVC files. And that is step three. Let's jump over to that. Okay, now we've copied over the files, we've updated the configs. And now we've got some files on the MVC side that we need to update. And the first one of those is going to be under views and then layout, underscore layout, CS HTML. So what we want to do is essentially clear out most of this boilerplate code that they've got in there, just so we can have a cleaner piece of code to start with. So we'll get rid of all this. And the rest of that can stay. The only other thing we want to add here is for Angular routing. So we are going to add a base href equals. There you go. Okay, so there's layout.html. The next file we're going to update is going to be the index page. And really, those are the only two that we're going to use in this application. The other ones uh, we're essentially just going to. Um, we're not going to need the contact page or about those. I guess you would really want to implement those as part of your Angular application. But in this case, um, these, the layout and the index are the two that will update. So if we jump over to index here, we are going to just take all of that and get rid of it. And then we're going to paste in this code. And what this is, is it's going to just put an H1 at the top so we can see that we did get to the index file. The app root as you know from Angular, that's going to be the tag that you want from your Angular application to, and that's where your application code and your components will end up showing up. And then over here, we've got a section for scripts and we've got two different kinds, one for production and one for development. And I'm going to explain why we're doing that in just a minute. And then the second, uh, the, I'm sorry, the third file that we want to go touch on is the startup.cs. So let me just grab the code for that and I'll show you what we need to include. So if we jump over to startup.cs, 
we scroll down to the bottom, this is the piece that we want to take out right here. And if you didn't see that, I'll just put that back. Really, you're just taking out the piece where it was add the routes for MVC and the static files, and we're just going to paste in this instead. This is going to add uh, the spa fallback route, which is single page application. And this comes from Microsoft ASP.NET Core SPA services. So this is a new route that we're going to add. And what this does, this helps forward any unknown routes back over to Angular so that it'll allow you to bookmark component pages and have ASP.NET smart enough to redirect it back to Angular to get that rather than give you a 404. So that's kind of a key piece that you want to make sure you include in this. So now if we go ahead and save that. So now we've got the changes that we need as far as the layout page, the index page, and the um, startup.cs. Now the last thing I want to show you is why we made those script changes. And for that, I'm going to jump back over to a command line. Okay, to have a look at why we wanted to include those uh, script tags that I had in the index uh, CSHTML file, I want to show you the difference, what goes on when we're doing a build in the files that are generated. And when you're dealing with just an Angular app and you're dealing your, and you're publishing your Angular app kind of as a unit, and you, you don't need to worry about those files and name because they're going to end up naming them the same. It's going to do the old, it's going to include your own script files in it as part of the generation process when it updates index.html. But in this case, we're actually hard coding what those scripts are going to be called within our index.cshtml. And that's a problem because we're going to get different outputs. You'll see if we go in here and let's say we're developing and we go in and do an, a uh, ng build dash dash watch so we can do some work. You'll see that when these get generated, uh, what these files are called, and then we're going to do a couple other examples real quick after. Okay, so you can see here when we're doing ng build with watch, we get a main.js, a polyfills, and that's great. So let's go ahead and do a control break on that. And now let's see what happens if we do a build with prod. Okay, so now you can see when it generates these, not only do you get more files because we weren't just getting the main.js, now we're actually getting two different versions of the main for ES. 2015 or ES5, but it's also doing a cache busting uh, naming of the files so that it will always generate a new name that it's going to include. Well, we're not going to know what that is, so that's going to cause a problem for us if we want to include those script names within our index.cshtml. Now, one other thing we can do here, we're going to say, fine, let's, do, let's go ahead and do a prod build, but we want to disable that last piece. So we're going to say output hashing, and we're going to say none. And there you go. Now you can see we're getting much cleaner file names, consistent file names that we'll get from all of our prod builds. And you might be saying, wait a minute, I want to get my cache busting because the last thing I want to do is deploy to production and have someone tell me that they're not, you know, pressing control F5 and seeing our latest changes. So that's fine because that's the difference with what we did in our index page. So over here, you can see if we're doing a development build, okay, so if, if we're doing development and that's just so you know, that's controlled over here. If we go to properties, go to launch settings, it's really just setting an environment variable, whether or not you're in development or if you're gonna be in production, whichever one you want. So we can make one of these development and one of these production, and then we can see the difference between those two. So if we come over here, we can see if we're in development, we're gonna to wanna to use the standard ones that we saw in that first scenario right up here. So in development, we know we're going to get just these files. So we'll include that. And that allows us to just use uh, ng build dash dash watch and just get those files and have it automatically update. And then the we're not using this middle one, but when we generate our production builds, we'll get those files and those are all included up here. And this cache busting piece up here, ASP append version, will make sure that we get an extension to that file name, that, or I'm sorry, a query string appended to it that'll always cause it whenever we do a new deployment to bust the cache on it. So that's a great compromise to say, we're gonna put it in Visual Studio, we're gonna get standard file names, and we're gonna be able to include those from our, from our MVC page and still know what they are every time and get cache busting. And you can see here, if we do, I'm gonna do a Control Shift B just to get a build going. And now we're going to run. And if we run with 
this one. Hold on, let's just close that out. I'm going to make one of these. I'm going to make the project run as production. So we're going to run the IIS one first, which is going to say that it is in development. If it says it's in development, we should see a green background and get these scripts included. So if we bring this over, there we go, green background. Now let's see. Actually, it didn't find our files. So let's take a look why. So we are looking at you know why it didn't find our files? It's because what's the last build that we did? Pretty obvious. The last one we did was production. So that's why those aren't showing up. Those files don't actually exist. So if we switch this over and we say, let's just run our project, let's try that first. So this will be a production build because we know those script files are out there. And ASP.NET Core is just starting up the server. Now we should have a yellow and there is our Angular app with a yellow background because we know we're in production. That's just there so we can see the difference. So now if we close that out and we jump back over and now let's just go back into our dev mode. So now we're gonna run a build. And once these are generated, now we've got that real-time build going out. So as we make changes, those files are updating right on the, uh, in the output directory, the dist folder. And now if we come back here and run our development build, which is the IIS Express build, we should see a green background, those files are there, and our Angular project will load correctly. So let's find our browser. So there you go. Now it's finding the dev files bringing in that different color background so we know that that's working and we've got our Angular app running. And as we make changes, we'll have ng build running in the background, saving and recompiling those every time we do it. So in a few short steps, we were able to bring our Angular app into Visual Studio and get all the benefits of working in that environment. And at the same time, keep working with an Angular app the way that we're accustomed to with things like ng build dash dash watch now, in an upcoming video, I'll show how to take what we've done in Visual Studio and really start to parlay that benefit by putting this project up into Azure DevOps and set up continuous integration and continuous deployment with this Angular app. I hope you found this helpful, and I'd love to get your feedback on the content or future content you'd like to see. So feel free to reach out. You can find me here at LinkedIn or at my company, Temple Logic. Until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.